Now, over 1,100 migrants crossed the channel last week. This comes as more than 4,500 migrants made the treacherous trip in 2023 alone. Under the government's migration bill, Rishi Sunak has promised to stop small boats crossings, uh, authorising the detainment and deportation of illegal migrants on British shores. My guest tonight warns that channel migrants will overwhelm our nation this summer if things continue as they are. And it's calling for the government to utilise technology to locate where boats are leaving from in France. So does Britain face a summer migrant crisis in the Channel? To discuss this, I'm delighted to welcome former high-ranking naval officer, Dr Chris Parry. Dr Parry, welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. Hello, Mark. Why are you concerned about the summer and the numbers thereof? Well, it's not just me. I think most of the country is concerned that uh, we've got a very porous border. Uh, we've just started what I would call the boating season. And I think most people who are trying to get into this country one way or the other know that legislation is coming down the track. Uh, and they want to try and get into the United Kingdom before that re legislation starts to uh, take effect. Um, I don't think, you know, you have to be a rocket scientist to know that. Um, and I'm not convinced that we've got the systems uh, and the procedures in place to deal with that level of traffic. Uh, what do you think needs to happen in advance of the authorities being overwhelmed this summer? Well, the real problem, Mark, is that uh, the whole policy associated with trying to uh, get our borders secure and safe uh, has been incremental. It's been nibbling away at things. It's been tactical. There's never been a coherent strategy right from the word go. And what you do with strategy is you sort out what you're trying to achieve. And I haven't heard anybody say what they want to achieve politically or even on the ground. Uh, you then put the resources in place and you balance that with what is technically and humanly possible. I haven't seen that debate take place at all at any level of government or administration, uh, even amongst the military. Until that's done, uh, you're, you're just going to be trying to pin the tail on the on the donkey, frankly. Um, my view is that we need to do better in detecting people before they get in the water and certainly before they get to the median line. You know, you, we've got drone technology now that combines infrared sensors with radar uh, and also uh, the ability to intercept mobile phone calls and analyse those. You can combine them together and you can detect these people getting into the boats, just un unhooking the boats from the uh, from the trailers on which they are. Uh, we're not deploying that technology. It, it doesn't have to go on the French side of the channel. It can sit on our side of the channel. These sensors are very long reaching. And there's just a failure of imagination, I'm afraid. And if this were a military operation and we had to stop people crossing, we'd do it. How reliant are we, Chris, on the support of the French to tackle the crisis? Can we do it ourselves unilaterally? No, we can't because the legislation doesn't allow us to do that at the moment. And again, the legislation is about 10 years too late. That's the first thing. Um, secondly, what we should do is see the whole channel as a humanitarian crisis area. Mm. And we should be encouraging the French to help us solve that. If this were happening on land, um, the United Nations would be jumping all over it. Uh, and right now we're treating it as some sort of procedural exercise that ends up with a sort of taxi service that takes people to the United Kingdom. Uh, you go back to Roman times, Mark, uh, the channel was seen as a unified single command uh, and it was uh, and, and the navies there were coordinated as such. We should be coordinating this operation as a combined French and British operation. Uh, we shouldn't be seeing it as two sides of the channel. It should be a single unified operational area. Now, you've mentioned that it's a humanitarian crisis. You're absolutely right. People have died crossing that channel. It's a tragedy for them and they are victims of cruel people traffickers. Uh, it's also, isn't it, an economic crisis, given the fact that we're spending in the region of six or seven million pounds a day hosting and accommodating people that have entered the country illegally, often in hotels, which is very disruptive for local communities. It affects tourism as well. But it's a national security concern as well, isn't it? And of course, this is your area of expertise with reports this week that upwards of 19 terror suspects have crossed the channel illegally. Yeah, um, well, it's worse than that. I mean, we, we've had people come across who were declared murderers. They put it on their sort of entry form um, and they've served 60 days for 
obviously entering the UK illegally and promptly have claimed asylum. Um, so the whole system is totally, as I said, porous. Uh, but going back to your point, uh, Mark, um, you know, we keep putting the burden of uh, guilt onto the uh, the traffickers here, of course they're guilty. You know, they're exploiting people, they're making money out of it. But this is like the argument on drugs. You know, it's not just about the drugs traffickers. We've got to lay some of the blame on the people who are actually involved in this. If there weren't customers, the traffickers were, wouldn't actually be in the game. Uh, and it's the same with drugs. You know, until we shift the burden of responsibility onto the drug takers, um, then we're never going to solve the drug crisis. It's the same here. The government's making noises of saying, look, if you come and penetrate the border, you're committing an offence. It's as simple as that. And, you know, in Australia, if you try and do that, you never, ever get granted residency. Um, but I go back to what I said originally, Mark, until you have a strategy in place and know what you want to achieve, and certainly I've never heard what any government is trying to achieve here, you're never going to get anywhere. Uh, Dr Chris Parry, let's bring in broadcaster and journalist Mike Porky Parry, no relation but, uh, um, Mike, how would you solve uh, this crisis? Well, I've listened to everything Chris has said, and, and, and it's brilliant. Chris, I, I don't want to go back too far, but my father, my father was in the Royal Navy for six years. He joined in 1940 when he was 17 years of age, came out in 46. He was on the D-Day landings. Now, Hitler couldn't get across the English Channel. He conquered all of Europe, and the last one was Operation Sea Line, get over, conquer the Europe. He couldn't. But all these little boats can. And we don't have a navy these days. We don't have enough ships to be able to even have a presence in the English Channel to try and show people, don't come here. You know, we have to have a barrier and a border between continental Europe and the United Kingdom. We don't have that. The other thing is, Chris, which you kind of touched on, is that one of the reasons people come here is because when they do... They're made so welcome. We don't have identity cards in this country. So anybody who gets here and then slips out of, you know, the problem about being put into a camp or a hotel or something can just join the black economy and can start working anywhere they want because there's no identification cards. America was built on immigrants. I'm told that a million times a day. But when immigrants went to America from Italy or Ireland, excuse me, or anywhere else from around the world, the minute they landed at Ellis Island, if they were physically not fit or mentally not fit, they were not admitted and they were also told, you come here, but you do not get one single cent's help from the state. You have to prove that you want to be here by looking after yourself. And I just think we're just too welcoming. We're a great country. We've taken in people over centuries to try and help them and make them feel safe. But it's gone, the pendulum's gone too far towards overhelping them. However, Dr um, Parry, this Mike, has become a hot Mike, political say, issue. Mark, Rishi really Sunak just, sees this issue as an opportunity to recalibrate his premiership and win the next election. Do you not think that Rishi Sunak's political ambitions could see movement on the issue? Yeah, before I answer that, uh, if you don't mind, Mark, I'll say to Mike, look, we've done a great job of keeping Germans out since 1940. Um, you could say that's a real tick in the channel. We've kept, kept them out. It's not the job of the Navy to keep uh, migrants and refugees out. That's the job of our maritime uh, agencies. They're just not doing the job well because they're not resourced to do it from a technical or, or a, a financial point of view. Um, the, the issue, I would always want this country to be able to welcome refugees. What we haven't done is separated out the economic migrant, migrants from the refugees. It's as simple as that. Um, you, to be a, ref, a refugee, you just have to say you're one at the moment. And mm. to your point about ID cards, I've just taken delivery of an Amazon package. I had to show an ID to actually have it. Now, you know, if, if we have to do it for that and for driving and for voting and all that sort of thing, you're absolutely right. We, we have to actually start saying to people, you've got to have an identity uh, that is verifiable. Uh, and finally, to your point, Mark, um, the Conservative Party has said all along that it, it wants to be able to deal with the, uh, the channel crisis. I'm not going to criticise the Prime Minister for saying he's going to do it. I'm going to criticise the Prime Minister for the next election if he doesn't achieve anything. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister have actually uh, set their cap at this. 
Uh, they will be held to account for it by uh, the country and they need to deliver. Uh, Chris Parry, always a privilege to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your wise thoughts on a potential summer migrant crisis in the channel. Dr Chris Parry, former high-ranking naval officer and a brilliant political commentator, let me tell you.